good day. So in this moment, we will try to tackle the uh, the essence or the main topic where we are here, and that is the el all about electricity. So this discussion will be focused about the people and the history of electricity, and also in Magnetism. So electricity is the science which has its roots in observation known in 600 BC that a Arab, that Arab piece of amber will attract a bit of straw. So the, stu the study of magnetism goes back to the observation that a certain natural occurring stones attract iron and that stone is called lodestone. So the two sciences were separated until in 1820 when Hans Christian Orsted so the connection between them, them and an electric current in a wire will affect a compass in a needle. So, be, so basically, uh, Orsted uh, passed a current to a wire, then he put a compass near it, and the compass needle deflect as the current passes through the wire. So in that way, uh, that is the beginning of the science called, or the branch of electrical engineering, which is called electromagnetism. So around 600 BC, Greeks found that by rubbing a hard fossilized resin, now which is called amber, against a fur cloth, it will attract particles of straw. So this strange effect remains a mystery for over 2,000 years. So they didn't know what is happening on that piece of amber. amber. So around 1600 century, or around 1600, uh, around 16,000 so William Gilbert a, a physician who lived in London at the time of Queen Elizabeth I and Shakespeare studied magnetic phenomena and demonstrated that the earth itself was a huge magnet by means of his ter Terelia experiment he also studied the attraction produced when materials were rubbed and named it the electric attraction from that came the word electricity and all others derived from it so basically William Gilbert coined the word electric which in turn create the word uh, the word electricity so also as the as the science of electricity or the field of electricity progresses also there is another um, field which is electronics so during the 1800s it became evident that the electric charge had a natural unit which could not be subdivided any further and in 1891 uh, Johnston Stoney proposed to name it electron when JG Thompson discovered the particle which carried the charge the name electron was applied to it so he won a Nobel Prize in 1906 for his discovery so the word electronics comes from the word electron which is uh, given by John Stone Stoney. So we now go to the people uh, behind electricity. We have Benjamin Franklin. So he is most famous in his light uh, light kite lighting experiment. So uh, in 1752 Franklin proved that lighting and the spark from amber were one and the same thing. This story is a familiar one in which Franklin fastened an iron spike to a silken kite which he flew during a thunderstorm while holding the end of the kite string by an iron key. When lightning flashed, a tiny spark jumped from the key to his wrist. The experiment proved Franklin's theory but was extremely dangerous. So by doing that experiment, he could easily have been killed. Then Galvani and Volta. So in 1786, Luigi Galvani, an Italian professor of medicine, found that when the leg of a dead frog was touched by the metal knife, the leg twitched violently. Galvani thought that the muscle of the frog must contain electricity. So he coined the word animal electricity. In 1792, another Italian scientist, Alessandro Volta, disagreed. He realized that the main factors in Galvani's discovery were the two different metals, the steel knife and the tin plate, upon which the frog was lying. Uh, Volta showed that when moisture comes between two different metals, electricity is created. This led him to invent the first electric battery, the 
particle the voltaic pile which he made from thin sheets of copper and zinc separated by moist paste board so basically um, Volta made the first um, battery or the first cell so in this way a new kind of electricity was discovered electricity that flowed steadily like a current of water instead of discharging itself in a single spark or shaft Volta showed that the electricity could be made to travel from one place to another by wire thereby making an important contribution to the science of electricity so the unit of electric potential was named after him which is volt then we have michael michael faraday the credit for generating electric current on a practical scale goes to the famous english scientist michael michael faraday so he is basically a experimentalist so Faraday was greatly interested in the invention of electromagnet, but his brilliant mind took earlier experiments further. So if electricity could produce magnetism, why couldn't magnetism produce electricity? So he asked us that question and proved that by experimentation. So in 1831, Faraday found the solution. Electricity could be produced through magnetism by motion. So in experiment, he discovered that when a magnet was moved inside a coil of, coil of copper wire, a tiny electric current flows through the wire. Of course, by today's standard, Faraday's electric generator was screwed and provide only a small electric current. But he discovered the first method of generating electricity by means of motion in a magnetic field. Basically, he created the first generator. So electric interaction at a distance. So, Faraday also realized that the electric force is transmitted by an electric field, which is also synony uh, synonymous with a the magnetic field. Edison and Swan. So nearly 40 years went by before a real, really practical DC current generator was built by Thomas Edison. In 1878, Joseph Swan, a British scientist, invented the incandescent filament lamp, and within 12 months, Edison made a similar discovery in America. So Edison and Swan are the the two inventors who invented the incandescent bulb. Swan and Edison later set up a joint company to produce the first practical filament lamp. Prior to this, electric lighting had been called arc lamps. Edison uses this generator to provide electricity to light his laboratory and later to illuminate the first New York Street to be lit by electrical lamps in September 1882. Edison's success were not without controversy. However, although he was convinced of the merits of DC for generating electricity, other scientists in Europe and America, and America recognized that DC brought major disadvantages. The main disadvantage of DC is it cannot be transmitted to um, longer to farther areas because uh, as the this as dc is transmitted to be transmitted in um, longer area you must have a higher voltage and then, then comes westinghouse and tesla so westinghouse was a famous american inventor and industrialist who purchased and developed nikola Tes tesla's patented motor for generating alternating current the work of westinghouse and tesla gradually persuade Americans that the future lay with AC rather than DC. So the Americans adopt the AC generation, enable the transmission of large blocks of electrical power, electrical power using higher voltage via transformers, which would have been impossible otherwise. Today, the unit of measurement for magnetic field is named after Tesla. Then we have James Prescott Watts. So, when Edison generator was coupled with a watt steam engine, large-scale electricity generation became a practical proportion. So, the the steam engine of what serves as the prime mover of Edison's DC generator. So, James Watt, the Scottish inventor of the steam condensing engine, was born in 1736. His improvement to the steam engine were patented over a period of 15 years. Starting in 1769, 
and his name was given to the electric unit of power which is watt then we have andre ampere so andre ampere a french mathematician who devoted his himself to study electricity and magnetism and was the first to explain the electrodynamic theory in memorial to him he was the unit for current was named after him which is ampere ohm so george simon ohm a german mathematician and physicist was a college was a college teacher in cologne when in 1827 he published the galvanic circuit investigated mathematically his theories were coldly received by the German scientists, but his research was recognized in Britain and he was awarded the Copley Medal in 1841. His name was has given uh, in honor of the of him. The unit for resistance was uh, is ohms, and he basically um, formulated the ohms law, wherein current is equal to voltage over resistance, in which we will be tackling more as this video progresses so the most known father of electromagnetism is james clerk maxwell who developed the laws of electromagnetism in the form we know today as the maxwell's equation so maxwell's maxwell's equation are to electromagnetism than comparable to newton's law of gravity so there you go the scientists and the, the people and the history of electricity so thank you for watching this video see you again next time